The most effective way to get the people around you that you care about to improve their health through fitness and nutrition is the following. Simply be the example. It almost never works to harp on somebody or preach to somebody on how they need to change things. But being the example often works when you do it in a very calm, confident way. Literally, be the way you want them to be. Be the example, be calm about it, and then watch people come around. Isn't it funny how long it takes anybody who has been get, that has been bitten by the fitness bug it takes them a long time to figure this out. Oh yeah, and and it I I always compare it to religion mm -hmm. because I 100%. feel I feel like it's real similar. Like when if you if you were in your mid thirties or forties or older and you never really took care of your health, never exercised, never strength trained, never really ate a proper diet, and you do it for like the first time, like consistently and yes. committed and committed to it, yeah, changes your life. Changes your life, yeah. And it reminds me a lot of people that have been kind of, you know, wandering through life with no purpose and, and no belief in anything. And you're just here and then they find religion and it's like it changes their life. Yeah. You want to scream from the rooftop. And, yeah. And yeah. then everybody you see, you want to tell them about your religion or you want to tell them about their. And it's like it turns everybody off. I, well, <laughs> <laughs> it turns, no, I've never. And, and I'm by the way, I'm speaking from, you know, I'm guilty, too. I'm guilty of being that that guy who. In fact, I've told a story a long time ago to you guys where I like I got in a fight with one of my good friends because mine was more about talking about how much I love the the working in, in a gym and being a uh -huh. trainer and like I was so passionate and excited about my job and it rubbed him the wrong way because I was always talking about it and it's like but to me it highlights that like you know people don't always want to receive that information it's like they have to they have to first want that before you give it to them and I don't care how much how many of the answers you have for them. It's mm -hmm. like if they're not in a position or they're not in a place in their life where they want to receive that or they're asking you, then it comes off horrible. It totally. Well, with health and fitness in particular, because, you know, what's the implication, right? What's the potential implication? Somebody comes up to you, a friend of yours, they just started working out. They just lost 20 pounds and they're feeling a lot better. And they come to you and they're like, hey, hey, John, uh, dude, you got to do this thing, man. You got to do this diet thing. You got to work out. I mean, you might be thinking to yourself, like, screw you, man. Like, we're trying to say, I'm fat. <laughs> like, you just started doing this yourself, you know? Yeah. And, and you know, I'll, I'll do it myself. I'll figure it's out whatever. immediate, like, defensive yes. response. Yes. Yeah. So what do you mean? I'm not yeah. good enough? I, I could see how religion could do that as well, right? Yeah. Like, oh, now you think you're better? You know, that's like the, the natural inclination. Yeah, or, oh, this is just another thing that he's on right now. Yeah. Like, you know, talk to me in six months or a Listen, year, right? It, it, so this... This is it's an interesting one because um, the, the most effective ways I've ever been evangelized into anything was never because somebody came and, you know, hit me with it in my face. Purely by observation. It was always because I was around you them. You were observing. And I something about what they were doing or how they were, I really liked, or I could see what they were doing. And I could say, man, the way that that person operates their business or, I want wow, that. the way that person's a father. Or I want whatever. that. Yeah, like, what is that, you know? And then- That's you, true influence. 100%. It's 100%. not that that fake projected, like I'm I'm telling you to to do this because I'm so passionate about it. you. Just watching what I'm doing, and you want to know what that is because it's it's contagious. Look, I all of us have been doing this for a long. I've been training people uh, professionally for a long, long time. Okay, or like 25 years. Okay, do you know how many times? <laughs> I sat my parents down or like like aunts and uncles and cousins and grandparents. Yeah. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. You know, at one time I remember it was you know, <laughs> embarrassing to talk about, but I, like I went to my parents' house and I threw away a bunch of the food that they bought because <laughs> it was bad for them. Like I'm the kid, right? And I'm the parent. I'm like, you're not going to do, you know, you're going to walk and whatever. Yeah. And you're going to do this stuff. And it never works. It never, never, Have you never ever been works. called a health Nazi? Oh, God. Yeah. I've been called everything. Yeah. Yeah. I've been so, called that a few times. Yeah. It, it just doesn't work. But the most effective thing I ever did, though, was just be cool, calm, confident about it. And then people tend to come up to me and go, man, you got a lot of energy or, you know, wow. Not a, I, I'm not even going to say tend to. They all do eventually. Yeah. Everybody does eventually. If you If you put your head down, you stay consistent with your eating, your training, you just live the example, then almost everybody at one point in their life will cross a time when they desire something about that. They want to be better about their diet. I don't. I don't. I've never met a person one 
that hasn't said, thought to themselves, ah, I need to eat a little bit better or take care of myself a little more, or yeah. maybe I should exercise. And if you are never thumping them over the head with it and you're just living the example and you're the best example in their life of that, mm -hmm. they and will you'll make them feel the less, the least judged. That's right. Most, they yeah. will, you will be the one they come up to and say, Hey, you know, Sal, I've been thinking about trying to be better about yeah. my diet. I've watched you for years, the way you are and stuff like that. What, what, are what do some, you think I should do? Yes. Yep. hundred yep. percent. It'll, it'll, it'll happen that way, but you gotta be patient. Well, and it's not just that, like, cause I think that what happens, we get impatient, especially if there's someone you care about and you see their health going down or you see the mobility have, you know, issues or, or whatever you could become impatient. But, uh, the bottom line is there, the, there is no other way. So in other words, you're not making the choice of I'll be patient, be the example and that'll take longer, or I could kind of force it to happen. You just it, it won't happen otherwise. So even if it doesn't happen, it would never happen anyway. That's right. You can't you can't sit and force somebody. Um, and to even do if you, even if you do, they'll never they'll never st stick with it. So like you might be the able fail to, rate is terrible. Yeah, you might be able, if you have a child or somebody who um, you're an authority to, um, you know, or you can you can pressure somebody or guilt somebody into you know, making some, but they'll never stick to it Yeah, because they didn't, they you know didn't what the, ask for it. You know what the, oh, here's all your evidence you need. People, I think rely on, um, epiphanies. It's like, oh, I'm still, you know, they'll just get it. Something's going to happen. Do you know how many people, <laughs> Yeah, you know, this is, uh, this is just rhetorical, right? I'm not, I mean, I don't, you don't need to answer because we, I think we all know the answer, but you know how many people have heart attacks or survive cancer or get diagnosed with diabetes or high blood pressure or have some mobility issue that becomes obvious and still do nothing about it. Mm -hmm. Most people. Mm -hmm. So, and the reason why I'm saying that is because our, because then this may happen like, oh, my dad just had, he just got diagnosed with, di diagnosed with diabetes. So I had to go sit down with him and hammer him and preach him, preach, you know, preach to him, whatever. Still won't work. Mm -hmm. They, if they come to you, you be the calm um, example and you help and you, you can coach them and, do all that, but it just doesn't work. It also makes fitness people, you know, can make us appear it, it, we're easy targets as, as, as hypocrites when you're sitting there preaching all the time, mm -hmm. because you know, real balance isn't perfect. So you're, Oh, you're, Oh, you're a fitness person, but I saw you eat pizza last Friday, or I've seen you miss a workout, or maybe you're just young and you have good genetic. And that happens when you're the preachy person because they're uh, always going to look the, for the faults. Right. I think too, that I, I, I understand because I've been in this position too, when you have a family member that, say has cancer or you're watching them just yeah. kind of eat their, their life away and there's somebody you love. And so I get the, I get the pull, right. To want to, I want to try and save their yeah. lives. So bad. But I just, when I'm, when I'm facing those situations, I just take that on as a personal challenge of I've got to be even better. Like yeah. I, I've got to be, I've got to be so good about what I do that it, it becomes contagious. And if it's, if they haven't asked me yet, then there's there's room for me to continue to be better. I'm not mm -hmm. good enough, right? I'm not I'm not doing it well enough for them to you know and be there, be there for them when they need it. Yeah, you know that's the other side of it. Not to be like the I'm going to go work out and just kind of disconnect from this guy who doesn't want to. Take Do you know? Care I think this is a this is actually a part of our resistance. So you know, off air that we talk more about this and we've mentioned it on air before that we all hate to be uh, called influencers. Oh, and yeah. I think that's because we never s sought out to do that. Like the mission was to go out and help people and share all this yeah. information and yeah. knowledge. It wasn't to influence people to doing something. Yeah. It was like, mm -hmm. let's go out and let's give, let's show, let's be, let's be the example. Let's help others by showing others like yeah. that. But by no means we want to yeah. beat you overhead and shame you or guilt you and anything like that. We've never attempted to try and influence people. So when people call you an influencer, I just, yeah. I know some people embrace it and they're like all about it. I uh, hate it. I, it's fine if it's like, it's who you are. It's authentic and it's just magnified, sure. right? Like I think that's the ideal situation, but it's when it's like you start being influenced by, uh, you know, the people that are following you. You're trying to portray something there that's really not, you know, what you normally do or like yeah. you're, you're overly trying to create uh, this 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 persona uh, for people to buy into. It's just like it it's, just doesn't work. It's because influencer to me, when someone says influencer, it smells like fame seeker. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I do this because I because it gives me followers. It makes mm -hmm. me feel important. You know, mm -hmm. 
So that's why I hate it. Cause I've met, obviously, you know, we've met a lot of influencers and I'm, I mean, I know people know this, but maybe they do, maybe they don't, but most of them are fake. Like most of them are not, not well, real. Most of them are doing what Justin said. Most of yes. them are, you know, reading the algorithm, right. Or reading the, yes. the, the feedback and the metrics and they're going, Oh, when I say these things or when I act this way, yep. yeah. look at know, this response. It gets me Ooh, all disgusting. Going. Keep yeah. going. Oh, yeah. I hate that. And so that's why I think none of us like I think I mean it's all kind of in the same vein, right? Of the stuff that we're talking about. I'm not yeah. uh, I'm not a look, fan. I, look, I'll give you I have a personal example, okay? You 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 brought up religion. Um, you know, I if you've listened to the show long enough, you've you heard my spiritual journey, but I used to be a very stout atheist. Uh and I mean a real atheist, not like a you know, some people say, oh, I don't know. No, I, I, I like I literally was <laughs> searching. So spiritual. Yeah, like I was searching and that was the conclusion I came to and I was ready to defend it. Okay. But I was always searching. Right? So I was a real, I was an atheist. And at some point it became more agnostic and there was, you know, stuff that led to that. And then uh, that's kind of where I sat for a while. And then we, we interviewed Bishop Barron. Now the point of, issue, of, of interviewing Bishop Barron, the first interview, because we had had him on the show, I think twice. The first one was really because uh, it was kind of uh, my own curiosity he was so open to being questioned on the internet. You watch him on YouTube. He was very intelligent. So I said, this will be a great, this will be a great episode. And what's interesting, by the way, looking back, this kind of little side note, there were a lot of people that were like, you're crazy for having a bishop on your podcast. It's going to crash your podcast. You're like, nobody wants to talk, hear about that um, on your show. And we all decided, we're like, screw you, we'll do what we want type of deal. And so we went down to Santa Barbara. And to interview him. And it was really, I was asking questions that I wanted answers to. But anyway, while I'm there, uh, his staff and his team were literally what I'm talking about. They were just, just the way that they were. It opened me up so much. They were just such good people. Nobody was like preaching to me or doing, saying, it was just these really, it was just an incredible experience. And that opened me up to asking more questions and that kind of stuff. That experience is exactly what I'm talking about with fitness, when people around you, um, they don't feel like you feel like you're better than them or they feel like they're worse than you. They're just like, man, I, you know, God, they, that guy's so energetic. He's so, he looks good. He looks like he feels good. Like, I want to know what he's doing, you know? And that is the most effective way to, I guess, influence, to use that word, <laughs> mm -hmm. effectively, you know? So. You know, bringing up the Bishop Aaron, I actually <clears throat> had forgotten about that kind of moment in time for us, we were really nervous about, about doing that. I know. I, I remember, uh, you know, we're, st we're still on the rise. Right. Um, and we, we weren't as big as we are now, as far as listener listenership. And there was this fear of, you know, Oh my God, are we going to jump the shark by doing this? And it was like, I remember all of us agreeing that, no, this is a, a conversation that we genuinely all want to have mm -hmm. and we should do it for that reason. And it ended up being one of the most viral and biggest bumps we'd ever felt in the business to date. And so it was massive. And, the, and we didn't do it for that at all. No, no. That wasn't in fact, the, we, th we thought. No, we thought we were going to get hurt. Yeah. We really, and, and we agreed. Fuck it. Who cares? Right. Who cares if we get hurt? At this point, uh, this is what we want to do. And this reminds me of, I just was, this is just in the last week. I've been going back and forth in our forum and there's a thread going about, you know, the people that were, uh, that didn't like the Adam Lane Smith episode. Oh, really? I remember we had that same conversation, like, you know, do we take this chance and, you know, basically allow, so, give somebody our platform by themselves, no interview, but to present their information yeah. um, that they're providing. And we all, we all just agreed, like, you know, this could hurt the business, whatever. But I just, we think that we value this information so much. And originally the feedback in our forum, I'd say was about 50, 50. I felt like, oh, wow. There's a lot of people that spoke up that said like, oh, I didn't like it. Or I, yeah. I didn't, I skipped it. Boys aren't there. And so I was like, man, that's really interesting. And then right after that comes out the Spotify yeah. updates for the year. Yeah. Right. And Spotify has this thing every year. That's their, their viral social media thing that everybody posts where they, by the way, do you, have you heard like how much that's what that's done for Spotify? Mm -mm. Uh, I'll, t I'll get to that after just a little side side. I, I think it's brilliant, but you know, we'll, we'll so go marketing <laughs> for them for sure. Well, it's just brilliant yeah, yeah. because nobody's tracking podcasts and showing stats on. But anyway, yeah. keep and, going. I don't want to take you off. Course. And so on on the forum, you know, sometimes too, this can be a little bit uh, deceiving for us, right? So we have this community of people uh, that, and uh, you know, I'd argue that some of those people are are. Uh, we're very responsible for the early growth of this business and the support and everything mm -hmm. like that. So we value their opinion a lot. 
And, you know, having 50% of the people be like, Meh, about it was like, oh, fuck, maybe it was a bad decision. Well, then out rolls the, the Spotify thing. And lo and behold, the most, the single most shared episode that we had ever done in the previous year was the Adam Lane Smith episode. Mm -hmm. And it was so, it felt so good to, to get that because I, I'm guilty of allowing sometimes the, the loud minority mm -hmm. to steer the direction of, of the business I, when, our, when our heart and gut tells us otherwise. Can I just give you guys, uh, you know, I'm going to give you guys a, just a nice pat on the back. I really appreciate this about all you guys is that, because here's what happens. You, you, you have a business and we all lead in different, in different ways, but Adam definitely leads the business side the most. And so the, the struggle is always, do we do what we want to do, what we think is right and what's going to grow the business? Because if you can't grow the business, then you can't do what you want to do and you can't help people. That's just a fact, right? So if you're a trainer and your coach, you want to help people. If you can't reach people and nobody wants to hire you, you get to help no one. So there's a side of it that's always the business side and you got to juggle that. And you don't want to make stupid decisions that could crush your business because then you lose the ability to help people. But you also, if you have integrity, want to make decisions that are not just based off of here's what's going to make us popular because it's not who we are or maybe it doesn't really align with our values. And, you know, you could, and, and trust me, you could always twist and find a way to make it align with your values or trick yourself and so the kudos that, you know, what I want to say is that you, uh, we don't do that. You guys don't do that at all. I know you don't at all, Adam. So with something like that, um, I mean, that's awesome because, uh, it, 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 here's the deal. We didn't do it to get more shares. Mm -hmm. None of us sat in here and said, we're going to put these Adam Lane Smith episodes up because these are going to get shared like no, crazy. No, definitely right? not. It was literally like, this is good stuff. No, I'm, I, like I, what I still remember the, the the moment where, you know, Doug was uh, warning us. <laughs> yeah. you know, he was, you know, hey, this is, you know, this may not be a good idea. Maybe we should really think about this. And there's no, and, and he was thinking, you know, D Doug too, was always thinking of protecting the podcast, the business. And of he's course. always thinking that way. And I remember saying, I don't care. Like, I don't care if it hurts the business. I think it's the right thing to do. And, mm -hmm. and, there, and it worked. And it, it just, and it was so nice that it was not only, not only did it end up being shared, uh, but it got shared the most because if it wasn't shared the most, if it was the second most, I wouldn't see it. I wouldn't know because we don't have those. Oh, because the stats come and just. Yeah, the that. stats yeah. and the, the, the analytics on those things are, are not uh, easy to obtain and figure out. And so. If it was the second most shared, it wouldn't have been populated. So you know what this reminds me of? And then I want to circle back to the Spotify stats. I don't want you to forget about that. But you know what this reminds me of? Do you guys remember the moment as a trainer? Because this is a very natural thing to feel. And I don't think it was obvious when we were trainers two decades ago. It's a very natural thing to not want to send your clients to other providers because you're afraid that they're not going to have the funds to continue to hire you. Mm -hmm. Personal training is not cheap. Even in the late 90s when I was doing it, you know, it was 50 bucks an hour back then. So, so even now for a lot of people, that's a lot of money back then. That was a ton of money. And so the fear was this person just bought 20 sessions for me. They want to go see a chiropractor or they want to go see an acupuncturist or they want to go see a physical therapist. Holy cow. If they take their money and spend it with them, yeah. they're going to have less to hire me. Right. So I'd rather they not see anybody else. There was just like this battle. Right. And I remember there was a moment in my career where I just said, I don't, whatever, fine. If they don't have enough money to help me, that person is going to do a better job at this specific thing. Yeah. And what is what best my client the, needs. What's best for the yeah. client, right? And then do you guys remember this moment doing that yeah. and realizing your business grew because of it? Yeah. How, wasn't that a crazy moment for I, you guys? I, yeah, it was. And I, I actually learned that lesson pretty early on in my career. Yeah. And I think in, in my experience, the fitness space is, is uh, plagued by s some of the most people that are have that scarcity mindset. 100%. I, I don't know if I've met uh, or have been introduced to an industry that has it worse than we do. I just yeah. I just feel like it's so common. It's very egotistical. Yeah, especially since there's like so like you you labeled some, right? There's so many different av avenues to pursue health for people like as far as yeah, just pain alone. You have acupuncture, chiropractic, physical therapy, personal training, Western massage medicine. therapy, Western medicine, yeah. all of which are, have, are valid and have valid methods of dealing with pain. You talk to a professional, each one of those, and they'll tell you they're the best at it, <laughs> yeah. right? So, and they're going to fight and they're going to try and compete with each other. No, no, don't go see that guy. See me instead or whatever. And what's crazy is when the clients that I had that saw multiple providers that I worked with personally were the ones that stayed with me the longest. Yeah. And they were the ones that referred the most people to me. It only grew my business. Yeah. And, but the crazy thing is that's not the reason why 
Yeah. I did it. The retention is crazy. But yeah, if, if you're just solely focused on providing the best care, the best service, like eventually that's going to get out. Yeah. You know? And that's that's really what, um, you know, separates you, especially like to your point of it being a very rare thing to find in our space. Yeah. You stick out like just this beacon. And, and it's like people people can understand that if they go to you, maybe you don't have – all of the answers, but you have people around you that do. And it's like, yeah. you're going to refer them and they know that you're going to be accounted for. Uh, and it's not just going to be this garnering of like, I got to keep you to myself and, <laughs> and, and make sure that I do all the things. I, I used to always tell my trainers that you're uh, stop thinking that the customer is so naive and dumb, right? Like they feel that they know that. And if you lose out on them as a client because they only have a budget that's this big and they now have allocated that budget over to a referral that you gave them, that's a chiropractor, acupuncture, yeah. some of that, and that solves their problem, that one person who may never be able to afford to buy training from you or come back to you will refer you more people. You get the credit. You will. They will. <laughs> yeah. They will send you so much business because you're responsible for them helping solve that problem. Even if you initially lose that business up front, the what you get on the back end is normally tenfold that. So always keep that in mind when you're making that decision on whether you should outsource or send them somewhere else, even if it temporarily hurts your business because it'll eventually actually you know, you build know what your business. The irony business. of that is, is if you do it for that reason, it, it doesn't work as well. You have to literally do it because you just want the, you really care about the person. Then this stuff tends to come back because sometimes it doesn't come back. And if you're always looking for that, damn it, I referred that person and they did get better and they didn't refer to anybody to me. You know what? It doesn't work. I heard, I heard Adam say it on Mind Pump. That's bullshit. It doesn't work. Whatever. Yeah. You can't do it for that reason. Right. Or they for ask reason. for it, right? Well, I'm going to go send you over there. If it gets to go do this for me, like, <laughs> you have to do it <laughs> yeah. with, with it, expecting nothing. Today's program giveaway is the new program, MAPS 40 Plus. This is a workout program plus lifestyle guidelines, plus dietary guidelines, plus supplement guidelines. Like this is a complete package specifically designed for people over. 40. It's a great program. It's brand new. I'm going to give one away for free. Here's how you can win. If you want to win that, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you in the comment section. Now, everybody else, it's a brand new program launch. That means it's on sale. $80 off. Plus, we include two free eBooks, both of which will be sold for over $50 later on. So you get the program, $80 off, plus two free eBooks. If you're interested, this is what you do. Go to Maps. 40 plus 40 is the number 40 plus.com and use the code 40 40 launch for the discount and the free eBooks. All right, here comes the show. Okay. Tell me about the stats now with, oh, with Spotify. So, I, so what I just, do? I, you know, maybe that maybe Andrew or Doug can look up maybe the, the, the actual numbers and analytics on it, but they, they rolled that out <clears throat> a year or two ago. I think it was two years ago now. Yeah. So they, they, they rolled that out. And they saw this crazy, massive bump in subscriptions to Spotify just by sharing that stuff. It's just such a, it was such a brilliant marketing strategy on their part to just give that to people because people just want, they wanted to share yeah. it. And mm -hmm. it, they, the, the amount of ads and su uh, subscribers that Spotify got from that campaign, which is why you notice they've bolstered it. Mm-hmm. Right, so it originally yeah, started off with stats, like, yeah. yeah, it started off with like, oh, your top, your top five music or your number one yeah. thing that you listen to. Like, there would be like three or five things. Where this year they had like all kinds of data that came out. Oh yeah, you could see how many of your as a podcast business, you could see how many of your listeners listen to you more than any any other podcast. How many uh, listeners are you're in their top five? How many listeners you're in their top ten? Uh, how many new listeners you got? Yeah, uh, like there's all these. How many minutes? You know, like it's really spent. cool. Yeah, it's crazy. Really cool because uh, po uh, the podcast space lacked all that data. It was like, and like you said, we get nothing. Yeah. yeah, it has been so frustrating. Like I remember, yeah, when it's like all on iTunes or I guess Apple pod, uh, podcast, it's been like just a mystery. And it's like we we'll see waves. We'll see like you know, um, you know, where it just completely declines and, and, and just trying to figure out like where it's coming from pinpointing, like kind of how to best target audiences. Wow. Like look, it's been rough. Look at their numbers there. Annual Spotify users from 2017 to 2023. Holy Toledo. Look at that growth. That's in the millions. Yeah. That, yeah. So what's that top number there? My eyesight's getting pretty bad. 551 million. Wow. Users. Yeah. So, and in 2022 it was 433. 
you guys saw like so went up that much. Joe Rogan's up for contract Renewal. soon, right? Yeah. yeah. What yeah. Uh, what's your speculation? Do you think he you know I thought continues? I thought for a second X would start competing, but because all those advertisers pulled, I don't know how much money they have. So yeah, um, I don't know if uh, it it's a really interesting to talk about and speculate because Spotify <laughs> in the last, especially with all these companies like contracting, I, I believe Spotify too just had an, uh, another massive layoff not that long ago with like 1500 employees. Uh, someone can fact check me on that, but I'm pretty sure that just happened within the last 30 or 60 days. So you have a lot of these big companies that are, you know, contracting and they're, and uh, I mean, a lot of the partners that I talk to with uh, that work with us, you know, we're one of, if not the only podcast that they, they continued advertising with. And all of them had said the same thing is just that we're, we're completely pulling back on that. Just there, they need to do things that they can track every dollar. Mm, if we spend mm. four, we get eight and be for sure about it. Where, you know, advertising on podcast, television, radio, stuff like that is, is, it's hard to measure to a T like that. So that being said, and Joe Rogan being the biggest paid podcast that they've ever worked with, I don't know if they I don't know if they offer him the same thing. And I think they would have to offer the same thing or more for him to even consider it, you know. Right. It will reduce the number of its employees by 17%. Wow. Yeah. Well, what's that? What do you re what do you say? That's you from Spotify. I know, but what's he sharing? What are you sharing? You it's were talking you about Spotify and how much they uh, release people and they just release about 17% of their employees and the CFO. Oh, recently. Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. so I, it was, it was, uh, when was it? Was that right? Was it just recently? Right? Okay. So, uh, scroll, uh, uh, zoom in again, Andrew. This and then December 10th, December 10th, zoom in again and go to that paragraph underneath the one that you were just looking at and zoom in right there. So I could see that. Cause I saw something. Yeah. It says Spotify has embarked on an evolution over the last two years to bring our spending more in line with market expectations while also funding the significant growth opportunities we continue to identify. They're, it sounds like they're 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 just being they're projecting and being smart, yeah. right? They're well, like yeah, tightening well, up. I mean, yeah. we've we've talked about this before. You, all in the last year, you've had all these company valuations like cut in half, and so when you're when you're a, a a company like them that is taking on money from investors, and you're saying things like you're you know you're worth a hundred X of what they're yeah. doing like that. People just keep throwing money yeah. at you like crazy. You got to make the runway longer by cutting their spending. Right. So, so the opposite happened last year. You know, they, they, most all these companies valuations went down by 50%, some more than that. And so now all the, all the money's being held and tied up. Right. Mm. Which by the way, are you, are you current on all in right now? No. Yeah. The speculation on, uh, the potential, uh, both sacks and I think Freeberg both said this, believe that uh, a rate drop is going to happen in Q1. And in, of course, he's saying it. I think we talked about this. Uh, to just before the Biden. president. Yeah, of yeah. course. Because it'll take a little bit for that to actually. Yeah, because it's hurting them right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it potentially is going to. Bad and, idea. And then if it does that, it's going to set uh, fire on on the market. It'll just take off again. I know. The housing market will go off. And then, and then Tremont chimed in and said, like, his prediction is if they do that, that there's like trillions of dollars that's tied up right now that's there that that isn't being invested and spent because of all the fear right now, right? Yeah. So a lot of people that are venture capitalists or angel investors, the money is there. Like we mm -hmm. can track like that there's a lot of money in people's accounts and savings, especially the, the uber wealthy. And they're holding on to it right now in fear of like where the market's going to go. Any sign of the market getting even better, right? And that we've already hit potential bottom, and then the housing market taking off, mm -hmm. that'll drive the stock market up. That'll drive the trillions of dollars that's being tied up to go back into investing. BlackRock's just going to buy everything, and then we're going to be on a <laughs> rocket ship yeah. again. Hey, you know, based on what you said, yeah. Did you see the office vacancy in San Francisco? Speaking of BlackRock, did you see what their vacancy is? No, what is it? Oh my, I got to pull it up, bro. It I mean, is, did you know they tried to pass yeah, something that says exodus. that they can't buy single family homes? I saw that was uh, that was. On the dock. Oh really? Oh, they're trying to they're trying to pass yeah, to, that to keep that from happening. Wow. So man, maybe someone well, could look listen that up to this. For me. Not usually for regulations, but that one makes sense. Listen to this: San Francisco's office vacancy percentage. What what do you guys guess it's at right now? Office say, vacancy. Say that again. Say that again. San Francisco office vac. So offices in San Francisco that are vacant. Nobody's renting them. They're just sitting there because nobody wants them. Are you asking for the number? Yeah. Like yeah what percentage? Uh, Oh, what 85? percentage? No, no not that high. Not that 40%. High. Percent, I'll no, no, no. It's going to be over 50. I think it's like 60. 35%. Uh, which is the over. highest ever recorded, oh, by okay. the way. Union Square. Okay. By the way, Union Square is 
Like this is this was a great place to go shopping. Busy, like prime, prime, prime real estate. Now it's a bus, good place to get heroin. Pre, <laughs> well, <laughs> bro, that's true. I drove I, through there. That's it what it's turned it was, into. Crazy, dude. Pre pandemic, they were at three percent vacancy, and Union Square is always like never. It's a hot spot that. because that's right now eighteen percent, almost twenty percent in Union Square. Yeah. Vacant. And almost, so now what you're saying, three, most yeah. all the retail stores I well, like when I drove past had, had been, well, what you moved. were, what you were saying, Justin was, was like, that I've heard that theory that, that they're purposely d- crashing yeah. these, these properties so that these big corporations come in and it just, <laughs> buy them up. For it just them. doesn't seem like it was an accident. I mean, it's just, it's, it's too just obvious. Like, it's too like deliberate, like how terrible everything is there. You know, like it's just how broken everything and how much crime is allowed and and like it's just like it just doesn't add up to me dude and it and and so yes your 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 mind can kind of spin and and start connecting dots that aren't there but at the same time it's just it's such like it's such a it's such a uh i guess for me like a a bad um well it's just blatant handling of of policy and like just completely in the opposite direction of like what's benefiting businesses, what's benefiting residents, what's benefiting citizens for what, you know, like you just got to ask those questions. Do you know what, what movie this, let's see how good you guys are with trivia here. What movie that's the plot of where corporations uh, organize with governments to crash the property values so that the corporations come in and buy them up. What movie is that? It's a movie in the nineties. It's it's yeah. It's a, but you probably won't remember the plot because the movie was kind of cheesy. But it's also iconic. Hmm. Rob, Robocop. Oh, it's Robocop. Robocop. Oh, that yeah. happened in Robocop. Yeah, where they're they're trying to crash the 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 property values so that they could go in and buy them up. And uh, Robocop is you know he ends up fighting the crime. And oh, I didn't realize that. I mean, obviously, when you're a kid and you're watching that, yeah. you're more. You know, uh, you're paying attention more to the, ro- the, to the robot and Dude, the fight yeah. scenes. And and I'm not him about shooting the, somebody in the crowd. I'm not. That, I remember that. That. Yeah, yeah. that was traumatic. Dude. I remember that scene, bro. <laughs> he <laughs> shoots him right about. in the dick. Do right you remember that? Dick. Didn't they try and re- did you ever watch the remake of it with uh, uh what's his name, Colin um, Farrell? Right? Or is it no? Was it who is it? Colin oh, Farrell? I don't remember the remake. Yeah, they did do a remake. You're right. They did do a remake, and I never watched it. I didn't. I don't think it got any. Bro, I was. Were you guys being Robocop fans? I I loved it when. I, was, I mean, yeah, I, when I was a kid, yeah. I watched it a lot. I, oh, I thought it was, it was so violent, dude. dude. So violent. Yeah. It was terribly violent. Was it really? Oh, my God, bro. Really if you watch violent. it, it's yeah. so. I can't believe I, mean, I, I haven't wa- seen it in decades. So, yeah. I don't well, know. when did it come out? We got to see when it came out because I watched it in the 90s. It's got to be in the 90s. Right. But I think I was like 12 or 11. Yeah, I was when young. I, I was young. It. And there's no way that movie was appropriate for yeah. a kid that, that, like a 12 year old or 11 year old. No way. It's so freaking violent. It's not even funny. Yeah. Like he becomes RoboCop because they literally shoot him up so bad that his body. Shri- this is like in the movie. What year? Nineteen eighty-seven. Eighties. Holy eighty-seven. Yeah. Wow. Listen I mean, to me. I was only six, bro. bro I, I yeah. it was that feel old. like I watched that movie when I was ten or younger. I was gonna say I've, I remember watching it earlier. Really. <laughs> yeah. That's my parents yeah, thinking was, right now letting me watch that. I was I don't seven. Know, yeah, bro. It was crazy. I didn't realize that. That was terrible. Oh my god, I know, dude. I know. Oh, good, uh, it was good. Speaking good. of uh, of robots and. and you know, all that sh- shit or whatever. Uh, th- did you hear about the, the, this like cyber attack that was they were trying to do? I guess uh, there was a huge cyber attack. Where was it targeted? Like, was it? You know, I'm not quite sure. I know Rumble was down for a while. I see people, t- you know, uh, tweeting about that or whatever. Um, but there, there's like this big now. It's it's like stirring up. I don't know if it's just the internet, right? But stirring up like these fears of like big cyber attack and what that could potentially do. There's that movie that came out. With Julia Roberts on uh, Netflix. What is it? Leave the world behind. Oh, yeah, I saw that. So what is it? All, I, that's watch, that. I haven't watched that yet, but I've been hearing a lot of people tell me to watch it. I haven't watched it, but apparently that's what it's about. It's a massive cyber attack. By the way, you know who the producers of that movie is? Don't you love cool. these fear propaganda B- movies? Barack Obama and Michelle Obama oh, are the cool. producers of that. Yeah, of that particular, no. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> they are. No way. Yes, they are, bro. Oh, man. And it's all about a cyber attack. Uh, and there's a scene where I haven't seen the movie. I just saw the trailer. Okay, on. everybody. So this is based off the trailer. But it's like a bunch of Teslas that are just self-driving and crashing. And they have to like dodge Teslas. Oh. So I'm like, why would they? Interesting. Yeah, why is- you know, I heard, who's your guy you like a lot? Uh, uh, Rick Rubin talking on yeah. somebody's podcast about the the lost like artistry in in movie and music creation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the way he defined it was that we've, we've gone away from 
yep. artists selfishly creating as if they were writing in their own diary or journal uh, for themselves. For themselves. And where they're- What they honestly, authentically love. Yes. And then they're, yeah, they're creating the art as an expression of their love, right? Yes. As, as opposed to creating things for- an other audience. people in mind for audiences in mind for yeah and that's literally what all movies all books all content on social media is all geared i totally in. felt he was so spot on yeah, with that I, like I it makes a totally lot of sense agree. that like that's a way you would describe like music and and movies and television today is it's lost its artistry and if someone goes well how do you what do you mean by that there's art and all that. no it's that the, you know the way art was done you know was an artist puts out something that they, they love them, and they're not they're doing it for themselves to express basically sharing you a a part of their journal yeah, or their diary right of like this is what i'm passionate about this is what i love I and then if agree. it goes somewhere it goes somewhere if it doesn't doesn't matter because it was listen yeah. i 100 agree here's your evidence right here watch any famous rocker or musician from the 60s and 70s and tell me that they would they would never make it today with youtube and shit like that you look at the ramones or look at look at uh, Janis Joplin. Like that is just pure art, and there's no way they would have made it with YouTube because they weren't good looking. They la they looked and acted weird on stage because they were awkward. It was all about their just what was coming out, mm -hmm. and they became known because of the music, not it's, because of the way they looked. You know, I, I don't know. I feel like it's a it's a it's a double edged sword because there's the, there's the other examples of someone like an artist, like for example, like Teddy Swims, who I've I've shared before that I really like. And, you know, if it wasn't for things like YouTube, that, that artist wouldn't have been found. Like he didn't go sign with a big label. You're right. And then get known you're right, like that. You're right. And, I'm being too straight. And, right. and he was, and he was putting that out, just putting it out on social media. No, and right. then because yeah. it was so good and powerful, it got shared. And then he, he became, so there's like, I don't know, there's good and bad to it. Right. No, no, that's a hundred. That's a very that Oliver deal. guy. The, the Oliver, latest. uh, what's his name? J oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Why the, did I forget the, the folk singer guy. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, there's Viral an example song. right there, right. Of someone just putting out something that's so, and he's in the, his what backyard playing uh -huh. with no, no production. I guess you're, yeah, you're right. It, it's, yeah, that's, how, that's a very but balanced. That's deal. why it sticks out so much but, though, to your point is like, and I think people, uh, are starving for it um, and and when you do see it it's like whoa it's it, you you remember like how um, you, you're just not seeing that anywhere and like how like it, it just really pierces through because yeah. it's it's coming it's exuding there's like, always, from the artist there's well, always going to be processed food right it's like it's like processed food hyper palatable hits your senses irresistible but is it like a gourmet meal no but yeah. what gets what gets purchased the most yeah, to your point, you know, uh, it, it there is that it like it's, processed har food of it's harder to find that stuff because we're so inundated with the stuff that has been manufactured right, right. to get our attention. Right. Mm -hmm. So because it's been manufactured our attention, sometimes it's hard to see or, yeah. or from the, where back in the days you had to s seek out all that stuff. Yep. Like, I mean, I remember always like scouring and looking for like what's you know who's the latest whatever and listening to all their stuff yeah. and then being like oh man i'm the first one on this and like then sharing yeah. it to your buddies like that's how it used to oh, totally. go down you know yeah i finally watched and i know the forum kind of posted we talked about like christmas movies like not too yeah. long ago and like they posted one it was called like 8-bit christmas oh yeah is it good so i watched it yeah, yeah. yeah i shared that last year with you guys you did that's the nintendo oh, yeah, one i shared yeah. with you guys last year i told you guys to watch that remember uh, uh, I yeah yeah it's a year too old it. wow yeah. it was good just, we never paid it was good yeah it was good. i know <laughs> <laughs> i know <laughs> like oh Funny. first time i heard of this oh, Fuck hey, i remember heard of it yeah yeah posted the forum yeah yeah but yeah no i i watched it with the kids it was a good one it's like a family good one to bring with the kids to watch because it's like it's our it does yeah it's our generation it's it totally reminds me even like uh their interactions on the playground and everything yeah. like dude you remember i remember like there was always a kid that was like held back that was like huge and oh yeah like, total dickhead oh, yeah. Bully, you yeah. know there was always that kid yeah. i don't know if that kid exists anymore you know like yeah. people just kind of hold them back shelter anymore. it yeah exactly i don't know if they even so do that anymore when i when i dude i, I was when i was going through school that became that was an actual strategy by parents that were really like wanting their kids to be great in sports. So I, I was friends wow, with a kid dude. who was like no, super I, smart for yeah. his class. And he was, and it was like, why did you get held back? And he's like, no, my parents wanted me to be more physically mature 
at a younger age. And That's so up, dude. it he is. Dominated all oh, he was. He, he like he dominated him in basketball because he was like two grades behind <laughs> what he should have been in. And he was killing it in all his classes. And so yeah. it was like there was no reason for him to be held back other than his parents wanted well, maybe, him to maybe be. Maybe he identified as well, a different yeah. age, Adam. You know, <laughs> stupid. You know, that, was <laughs> that was before all that. Oh, my bad. Yeah, before that I went, Hey, listen, I went to high school. Uh, he was either a sophomore or junior, and there was a dude in my class or whatever my year. He was uh, 18 or 19. I mean, he looked like a grown man because he went to jail for two years. <laughs> yeah. Went to juvie for two years, came back. And I remember like, I mean, when you're 16, yeah. you know, or 15, an 18 year old is like, there's a big ass difference. Dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's like hanging out with us. I'm like, look at this guy. Like, holy shit, bro. Yeah. Sixth Whose grade. older brother are you? Yeah. There's this guy had a beard. You know, yeah. and like he was like uh, the gang and everything. He just was, I don't know why he was there, but it's like, you know, I think it was some group home thing. They're like, you know, and so he, he was there and like, we were kind of, he was kind of in our friend's circle, but we were always just like, man, this guy, and he was always getting in trouble. And, and you know, it, playgrounds were very different back. It was in rough. The day. Back in the day, playgrounds, there wasn't a lot of parents at play. It just wasn't. When I was a kid, when our parents would let us play at the playground, they would let us play and the parents would go off mm -hmm. and it was just the kids. And we would just, we'd organize our own governments, basically our own laws. Lord of the rules. flies a lot, a lot more so. Oh yeah. Now parents are now. like on top shit, but like literally, you know, I tell this to my, my older kids, they don't believe me. Like when I was, you know, a kid, 11 years old, 10, 11 at a playground, you get in a fist fight. Like you fight until the fight's over. Like yeah. there's nobody breaking you up. You're yeah. just going to fight. Yeah. And it's going to keep going. Now it's like, hey, Tommy he pulls a shirt. Boom. Parents are on top of him right away. So like, what do you mean? Then they film it. Yeah. They're like, yeah. what do you mean? You would just fight. Like, what would happen? Like somebody would win. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. either we'd get tired. We'd give up. That's, you get tired. That's yeah, what usually happens. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I can, I can, you just both look I can recall other. a few fights where we were both, both of us when we were done, just like are holding. Each oh other. yeah. <laughs> yeah. The fatigue <laughs> is just exhausting. Yeah. You're just yeah. exhausted. Or you're, yeah, you're, you're in a position. Yeah. Nobody's doing like, anything. Oh, I didn't think it was going to happen. You want to stop? If I let go, you're going to hit me. When you're younger, you don't have the power to knock somebody out. You know what I'm saying? So like, I think I punched the guy 37 times you know yeah. and all these like and the end of the fight was literally just shirt. you know yeah. me laying on top of him and him just laying there and us breathing on each other yeah. and, then, and, and then there's always yeah and then later it's always about who won i won oh you hit me i hit you more yeah. I won. Yeah, like, yeah i'm too tired Let's hey you know uh dr khan broke the seal already right and uh talked about what you did yeah i shared my video and so i wanted to uh may as well update and keep the audience on what's going on with us i, wa I wanted to ask you guys what's how i know it's early Mm -hmm. Um, but are anything different with your diet that you're allowing or you're able to eat or how you feel? Are you, I know he told us it would be, it's to early. Yeah, I know. So what, here's what we, here's what we got. We got, um, stem cell infusion. So through the whole body, um, uh, folostatin peptide, uh, which was put in a matrix. That means you do one injection and then the folostatin is active for a year to a year and a half. Typically folostatin. Uh, you'd have to inject oh, that's how long. multiple times a day, right? So, okay, so here's okay. So let's back up for a second. So stem cells; these are blank stem cells. They go to wherever your body apparently needs them: inflammation, pain, regeneration, whatever. <laughs> and it's like the ultimate uh, anti-aging, you know, therapy. They would say, okay, mm -hmm. folostatin. When that goes up, myostatin goes down. Myostatin. You might have heard us talk about in the podcast where it's the inhibitor of muscle growth. Yeah. So they'll take animals and they'll knock out myostatin. And then there's like a picture of a whippet, which is <laughs> a whippet's a skinny little just dog. Yoke. Just <laughs> right. So now false time's not going to make us do that, <laughs> but that'd be awesome. But, that, that was but he, but according to anecdotes and some studies probably experience a 10 to 10 to 15 to 20% increase in strength, which is a lot, especially mm -hmm. if you've been working out for a long time. So those are the things that we got. And then Adam also, you got some stem cells uh, put injected directly into your psoriasis yeah. plaques. Yeah. And so for autoimmune issues in particular, this is supposed to be pretty awesome yeah. stuff. So yeah. I don't, it's too early for me to say if I notice anything. Mm -hmm. I think I might have a little bit more energy, but I can't necessarily yeah, tell Yeah, so you. we all went in with different sort of hopes, I guess. And, um, yeah. you know, for me, like I've already, I was doing the Cabral, um, uh, protocol for um, SIBO and for a lot of stuff going on with my gut treatment. And so like I was basically up and, and done to that point. And now we're doing the you want stem cell infusion. So now I'm like hoping that that's... By the way, are, are you taking, are you on dairy? Are you eating whey? I say so drinking uh, Legion protein. Yeah. So I just, I just started uh, bringing 
bringing it back, not like in, in full force, but I definitely have had like bits of cheese of, of like, but it would just be like one thing a day, uh, a day or like every other day. So you've had the whey protein. So I had the whey protein. And again, it? before that, like it didn't really like affect my gut too much, even when, uh, before any treatments okay. or anything. And, and I think it was because of the enzymes, uh, uh, like there was additional, I don't know. It was my, it was more receptive. Like I could easily like, uh, assimilate it. Okay. So I have a question about that, Sal, for you related. Justin's a perfect example of this. So if you had you previously had like a, a, a dairy intolerance yes. and you've now potentially solved that, I almost feel like the opposite advice would be would be true in this situation. Meaning, we tend to always tell people, "Oh, go whole foods. Whole foods is the best way to go." But something that is easily digestible would that be a smarter strategy when you're trying to introduce something like dairy for the first time? So instead of him going out and having a block of cheese, having a easy the, digestible the whey shake. Yeah, the answer to that's kind of it's, it's complicated. So it, first off, you can have an intolerance to casein which is a type of protein found in dairy. You can have an intolerance to whey, which is another type of protein in dairy. Or you can have an issue with the lactose that's mm -hmm. in dairy or the fats that are in dairy or all of them. So the benefit of going with a pure whey, and by the way, of all of those, let's just stick the proteins are the ones you're most likely to be intolerant to because proteins tend to be the most active. Uh, casein, people tend to have an issue with more often than whey. Way so oftentimes someone will get their test back and it'll say, oh, casein is high, but whey is low. So you can still have whey. Mm -hmm. The value of a shake is that like, so legions whey isolate. There is nothing else in there. Mm -hmm. So he, he can, he knows if he knows that whey is okay, he could just do whey and not uh, have anything else and okay, control it. Okay. Otherwise he could have cheese, which has All of whey, casein, the fats, uh, okay. la maybe okay. lactose. So then it does kind of make sense for yeah. like teasing it out or trying yeah. to figure it out like yeah. that. Like it, it'll be a quick, like, okay, yeah, this is okay. Or yeah. it's well, not. So far, yeah. I mean, the, the, it's only been a few days. Like they're like the reaction has been uh, non-existent. So I'm happy. Awesome. You missed it yesterday, but I did say something to Sal and you know me, right? I'm the, I'm the one who teases this guy, right? Of being like, Adam feels nothing. He's yeah. always the guy that feels nothing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Sal's the guy that feels everything. Yeah, and I feel he everything. feels immediately. Yeah. You feel nothing. Yeah. I'm like somewhere in the middle. But I had this really interesting thing that happened. So first of all, I've been really inconsistent with my training. So I'm like super weak right now. And I expect that. Right. And I didn't go in there and go lift. And I wasn't like abnormally super strong. But what I did notice is you know, when I when I do incline bench, one, first of all, I, I tend to always prime really well before I get into it so I can get into the movement really good. I've never been good at leg drive, right? That was, in fact, I didn't even start to practice leg drive with my bench press until you and I got reconnected later on with lifting and stuff like that. And mm. you would co constantly preach to me that. it's a powerlifting style of bench. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I was I was totally driven. guilty of relaxing Body my work. legs or yeah. doing, doing stupid, whatever. So I've never, and, and even to this day of, of, planting my feet i never feel like i'm getting the benefit of it like i'm like connecting to the ground really well and driving i just do it but i don't yeah. feel like i've ever yesterday when i did incline bench for the first time i actually felt this like true connection from my feet all the way through and he i literally actually came in halfway through his workout to tell me that yeah really? yeah, yeah, yeah which yeah. is how, not adam how trippy yeah. and the That's only not adam. and the reason why i bring that up is because i did overhear dr khan say that one of the things that we will feel is an improved neural drive. That's from the false statin. Uh, false statin, yeah. yeah. False from statin the, increases mm, your neural drive. Yeah, and to me, mm, cool. that was the, the first example of that, I being able to translate that into my workout or say mm -hmm. that like, oh, I did feel something. How has your psoriasis been? Have you noticed anything yet? Because it's supposed to take like six to eight Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's again, I, I'm reserving my excitement because uh, I don't want to get overly excited about something and then it did not pan out. But it's getting better every day. Every day it's getting better. That's wild. Yeah. That's cool. If it, and, if it cures your psoriasis, and it's I, I don't think ever. I've ever gone 48 hours and not had even a desire to itch and pick at it. Really? Yeah. And she said that I would scab over because I, you know, she shot me 50 times in every spot. And so, right. you know, basically you're going to have, yeah, you're, you're going to heal and have a little bit of a yeah, scab. A holes. And so I do see a little bit of that, right? Cause the initial, I saw initial difference right away. And then, but I mean, it, it seems to be weird. Yeah. So now we also have to say that, that this is, these are not inexpensive treatments Oh yeah, at all. 
No, this, like, is, this, is, this is super expensive. Super but, ridiculous. But here's the thing, though. Like, um, I remember talking to Dr. Khan and him offering to do this for me and stuff like that as like, you know, we as a solid and a favor to me. And I and, and I knew the expense of of what it would cost. Now, anybody who's who's been riddled with this like I have and you've exhausted so many different possibilities, right? And I love, I don't, have you guys watching my, my, my post on Instagram? Yeah. It's so hilarious. Like, you know, people are like, did you try the carnivore diet? Have you tried this? Yeah, have you tried that? Like, yeah. There's a post where I, I write in there like, I've, and I say it in the video. I've of that. I've, yeah. I've tried every diet that you can think of. Have which you tried you, avoiding gluten? Which, yeah, I know. It's that there's tons of these <laughs> that are saying, oh, no way, right? And so, yes, I've done it all. I've done the tanning beds. I've done the infrared. I've done the steroids. I've done the creams. I've done the pills. I've done the diet. Di every, yeah, every every type diet of diet from yeah. carnivore to vegan to paleo to avoiding just gluten to yeah, just avoiding the, the seed oils. Point, yeah. I, so the only thing I haven't I done is let Justin piss on me. It's the only thing I haven't done. <laughs> I'm not ready to Sorry, go there. Doug. <laughs> so, Doug's hey, great transition, Doug, well, to yeah. the boofing. To oh, the, to great. The booth, to yeah. The, to oh, the booth. So glad you're going there. Yeah. This is, <laughs> hey, he was so happy. He thought we were almost there. He thought we were going to, I hey, was we going to miss done. it. No, I can't miss this because it was sent to me as a new fitness trend that's happening right now, <laughs> which is shoving caffeine popsicles up your butt. What? Wait a minute. Stop, yes. Stop this. Yes. Stop this for a second. Hold Andrew, hold look on, up, look up, up caffeine popsicles, they're, monster they're drink. Keistering popsicles. Yes. Okay, so you know what this feels Supposedly like? Supposedly it is hold working on, really well. Hold on a second. Yeah, of course well, you absorb shit you through absorb, your... Come on, yeah, yeah, listen. Yeah, okay, everybody calm down. It's a very everybody direct shot to your in, bloodstream. In the fitness industry, is calm the fuck down. <sighs> this is not smart, you guys. Caffeine is perfectly... Doug really wanted me to avoid this conversation, but I just think it's too This is to what's so... Share. This is like, mm -hmm. if, you had, if you had to say, hey, can you just say one thing that illustrates what's wrong yeah. with the health industry? What's this would be perfect. Dude. First of all, caffeine is perfectly efficacious orally. There's no fucking problem with absorbing yeah. caffeine why, orally. Why do our peers immediately want to go to something up your ass? I feel like <laughs> I mean, yeah? it like, almost feels like they're sitting around these... talking to each other and they're <laughs> like, bro, either A, how can I be so weird and different? Or B, you know, I like I want an excuse to put something up my, <laughs> up my butt. That's hey, all you it is. caffeine? That's all it is. Andrew, you, you find all the articles on it? it in your huh? I found I found it in a Reddit thread. Yeah, yeah. It's, I don't it's, know if that's where you some. Basically, it's kind of funny how this came up. So the guy originally was just wanting to know if the caffeine efficacy still works if he freezes his monster into a popsicle. Yeah. And the Reddit thread eventually evolved into yeah. you have more bioavailability. That's the real monster. <laughs> You know, I'm happy that you had Andrew look that up. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. we're gonna mess. We're gonna mess his uh, search engine up. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. hey, he starts typing it already. Auto populate. Wait a minute, yeah. Doug. Uh, yeah. Wait a minute, Doug. Uh, okay, so now it sounds more like. So that's how it started. I've actually I read this. Okay, same thread. so maybe it's not the fitness yeah. space. Maybe it's literally. Uh, do you guys have a friend like this in your group in your group circle when you were a kid? It's just like, we'll do any weird thing. Like, bro, yeah. eat that cricket. Like, no, I'll snort. Well, I, yeah. like what Andrew's saying, he the, the the person who posted it originally was just asking if the caffeine would still, of course, yeah. You, uh, you got to be. But listen, uh, if you if you are attempting to do anything stupid like that, understand that the absorption process, especially with alcohol, for example, you can oh, yeah. kill yourself. Well, yeah. you remember the example from the guys, uh, Jackass did that. Mm -hmm. He took a beer bong in rectally. Yeah, you don't mm -hmm. remember that? No. That's in Jackass two. One or two. Yeah. <laughs> they called it the butt chug, I believe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I but I mean, it, it made him yeah. like puke. I mean, it hit him so hard. Oh, yeah. Dangerous. Yeah, dangerous. yeah, yeah. So it's it's like, I can't remember what someone said, like the amount more you absorb by going that way than the other. And it's like, it's exponentially higher. So yeah, 25 milligrams of caffeine rectally is probably like 175 or 200. I don't you know. know orally. I mean, you deserve so, what you get yeah, if you put a Okay, like, but aside from the, LA, aside from the, and I didn't, by the way, I learned a new boof. I didn't know boof was a yeah, thing. So boof is keister, basically. Yeah, I think so. I think, okay. I think so. so like people if in I'm prison, using it correctly, somebody So people will. in prison sneak things in by boofing them. Yeah, by boofing Instead it. of keister. Yeah, I don't know where, I don't know the or, oh, origin. Of, but you know what? Uh, uh, okay, that. pull out the, the boofing part and uh, uh, popsicles. Energy drink popsicles sound kind of kind of good in summertime. <laughs> <laughs> Great transition. Just make sure your friend didn't boof it first. No, am, yeah. I the, am I the only one? Make sure the wrapper is am I the only sealed one? properly. Yeah. Huh? No, that's that nobody mean, else would I, do it. No one else would do an energy popsicle in the summer. I mean, I, I, sure. I mean, they've done it with like alcoholic. You drinks, know why they wouldn't so do that? Why not? Might as well. Why? Because it's 
too attractive to children. So you'd be, you'd be, you, it would be dangerous. Why they wouldn't sell it, you mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Imagine having caffeine popsicles in your fridge. Yeah, but they do Otter Pops, but, but they're like with alcohol. alcohol. They yeah. are, but can you That's buy them? Point. Yeah. Of you course can. You can buy them at, you you buy them buy them at them. Costco. But do they put them in, are they easy to open or they have special? What the it, fuck does that matter? It's so Because the, the lawsuit. You go buy some vodka Otter Pops that are easy to open. Your kid gets them, eats them and dies. Well, define easy. That's what I mean. A pair of scissors? Maybe I don't know because you know how when you buy cannabis in California, how all the the containers for the mm -hmm. edibles are all like childproof. Yeah, yeah, well, that's, that's what I mean. I'm wondering if they do that for the alcohol. Yeah, I don't so, think they do I, I really don't think a lot of these people have a lot of morals, so I don't really think they give yeah. a shit. <laughs> so it's like, oh, if I should. walked in on somebody boofing a popsicle, yeah, that, I would be so confused. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'd be so confused. first they're sunning it, then they're boofing it. And then, uh, what's the other one they used to do where they do like a, a coffee? That one at grounds? least has some origins, some historical origins, but it's still weird. Co coffee enema has historical yeah. origins. Yep. yep. Really? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. What was it used for? In the was it to clean clean out your system? Yeah. That's apparently. what it was. That was yeah. The, and the caffeine hits you. And it cleans out your system. Coffee. Look, maybe Google coffee enema origins, Doug, or maybe Andrew. Yeah, Andrew, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but while he's doing that Doug's real quick, while he's doing that real quick, um, I want to talk about a message that we got from somebody who went uh, and worked with one of our partners, NutriSense. So for people that know NutriSense, you work with people, dietitians, on your diet, but they also work with a continual glucose monitor. So they can individualize your diet based on how your body responds to food, different foods, and everybody's a little different. Uh, but the coaching is what's so important. And so that's the message. The message I got was, you were totally right. The coaching made all the difference in the world because I can contact this person. They let me know. They talk to me. And by reading my, you know, what the message said was by reading my, my, you know, glucose levels and stuff, I've been able to individualize my diet and it, I feel way better like than I've ever felt. But the coaching made the biggest difference. That's the know. biggest value of that. hundred percent. Imagine uh, your glucose spike if you actually boof stuff. Uh, I mean, yes. that would just... It would be it's gonna boot way I mean, more. It's gonna spike your boof. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at this. hold Doug's, on. Doug's so mad right a now. Coffee <laughs> enema is one of the ancient medical procedures uh, still in use today for detoxification. Since Dr. Max Gerson introduced it for the purpose of cancer therapy in the 1930s. Uh, cancer therapy. Uh, Wait a minute. Interesting. Hold on a second. All the weirdest. Wait stuff. a minute. What if it did? What if the what if the big pharma is trying to hide this from us? Just to, maybe maybe this is the it's secret. Like, that that is that's the cure. Yeah, interesting. It's gonna I know. Probably switch in the shove yeah. things. In Told you, it's been around for a while. Okay. Yeah. Well. We're, oh, 1930s. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh. Do we, do we have a shout out for I anybody? Do. Doug, yeah. Who did you, you write it down, Doug? I did. Your what? book, the new gold standard. Oh yeah, the new gold standard, which is the the rich one. The author is. Um, let me see the author really quick. It's really been, um, spur, uh, like, uh, what's the word uh, I want to use? It's been spurring a lot of ideas. In it, it, it has. And, and I mean, there's things that uh, I, I was texting you this morning, right, that I feel like we can be much better on. Yeah. And I just think uh, Joseph uh, Michelli, um, really, really good. And it really, really cool to, uh, I mean, uh, for a brand to to grow that big and be, have started, you know, as early as the 1900s, and to remain consistent with that, like the imagine the the buy in and consistency oh, yeah. that you have to have. I mean, like one hotel could could easily have six hundred employees, and you have over a hundred of that, so yeah. well, sixty thousand employees. But like, have you ever been like have you ever been to a Ritz where they don't embody that? And I just think it's so cool. And as I'm reading it, what what spurred all this was actually when we just got back from there, right? And I'm like, man, this is so impressive. Whenever I go to one of these, there it's like this. And as I'm reading the book now, I'm going like, oh, okay, makes sense. Now it makes sense. It's like they literally like this is like a, co a code that they mm -hmm. all totally live by and they're the things that they did for us right like so the the baths that you guys got drawn or like the like that's not like someone saying like you need to go do this that's just like they've empowered them to and there's a, a one of the you know uh you know one of their uh what you call it credos. What, yeah credos thank you so that they they, they they believe or live by is like for them to try and find things that even the customer wouldn't expect wouldn't expect they wow. wanted and and to try and deliver on that right it's like you know so they could come up so yeah. for like example they could show you like in the morning say hey sir um we know you like coffee but we froze it for you 
<laughs> in the popsicle form. <laughs> we heard. Yeah. We heard from your podcast. Over here, you, you have a two. You like this. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, if, if they, they really did that, way. even though I wouldn't do it, I would be like, whoa, that's impressive right yeah. there. You did yeah. your homework right there. You know what over like, here for you to get Imagine how much that would sun. blow your mind. Like You would, you would be like, <laughs> yeah. I would actually almost consider it. You know what I'm saying? It'd be rude for me not to. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I feel weird about this. There's a lot of thought that went into this. Let's try this. Hey, check this out. There's a company called Ned that makes full spectrum hemp oil products for a lot of different reasons, but one of my favorite products is their Brain Blend. They use specific concentrations of cannabinoids and terpenes from the hemp plant. So this is a very close cousin to the marijuana plant, but by the way, this is perfectly legal in all 50 states. They use specific cannabinoids, add their botanicals to improve cognitive function, to give you that euphoric feeling, that creative feeling that you get when you come up with great ideas uh, or you have good conversation. I help personally formulate this one. The brain blend is amazing. You will feel it. You take a dose, 40 minutes later, you know you took something. Try it out. See for yourself. Go to helloned.com. That's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump and get 15% off. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Lori from Texas. Hi, Lori. How can we help you? Hey, hey guys. Hi, Lori. Hey. I am so excited to be here. I just want to say thanks for putting out the message to women how important street training is um, just for a good quality of life. And I think you're awesome. You have lots of fan clubs out there. I have a girls fan club that love you. A shout out to my girls. All right. <laughs> oh, awesome. Hey. So um, I just... I've listened to all the podcasts. I'm a little bit behind only because of work, but I'll get caught up this weekend. Right on. <laughs> Thank you. What can we do for you? Well, um, I emailed you twice. Um, <laughs> like you didn't get it the first time, but I guess here's, I'll tell you a little bit about myself and then I'll read my email. So I've been lifting for about 11 years. Um, I started out as a runner, um, just running for my mental health. And then one of my friends introduced me to lifting weights and I fell in love with that. Um, my starting weight was about 97, 98 pounds. I was very underweight. Um, I had to um, overcome all of that. So I have tracked macros over this period of 11 years. Um, and I have put on, to this point, I think I'm up to about 25 pounds. Wow. That's just through eating, nutrition, tracking, lifting weights, cutting back on cardio, all of that. Um, I have done a lot of programs. Y'all have shifted my mindset from women's specific training into it just it's based on the individual. Um, so I've done a lot of your programs. I've done um, aesthetic, strong. Um, I did aesthetic twice, actually. Strong. I own Anabolic Advance, um, and I most recently finished Split, which I loved. Um, so here's what I at my question that I asked to you. Um, I basically I said I've uh, I've been lifting weights for a long time. I'm 47 years old. My focus at this point is mobility, but also uh, building muscle because I've listen i've listened to you have many people on here talk about how important it is for women to have muscle as you age um so i really want to build muscle i um am not currently tracking my macros only because my work is pretty frantic um i'm very busy um i try to make sure i have enough protein with breakfast lunch dinner and my snacks um, when I was tracking, I was always at about 140 grams of protein a day. It's really never been a problem. Um, I guess finishing up split, I guess my question is, what can I do at this point to um, continue to build muscle? Because I know my strength gains have gone up, but um, I don't feel like I've really put on muscle um, without having it, you know, evaluated with, uh, in body scan or anything like that. Okay. Very good question. So, all right, let's go through the program sequence. You finished split before that you did strong or aesthetic. Um, aesthetic was first. So aesthetic, then you did aesthetic twice strong and then split, correct? Yes. Okay. So <clears throat> you're going to need to drop volume if you want to get your body to start responding in the way that you want, because all the programs that you listed are great, 
high, but they're all very volume. high volume programs. And when you've been training for a long time, well, two things, one, you can't perpetually build muscle. So at some point, the, you know, the progress, no matter what, it's going to slow down quite a bit. And then it becomes a lot about working on other aspects of performance, improving mobility, maybe working on agility, control, maybe working on stamina. So that'll happen as well. However, the other side of this is we know about progressive resistance or progressive volume, right? You got to keep adding more to get your body to continue to respond. But there's a, a point when you start, when that stops working and when you need to actually take a step back to get your body to respond again. And what typically happens with people in this situations, all things being equal, let's say you have good diet, good sleep, there's no other factors, is you're going to take a step back in volume and start to see progress, or you'll take a step back in volume, see no change in progress, but then step the volume back up, and then you see the progress again, okay? But it's, it's based off of what you're telling me, it's pretty clear that a drop in volume is probably what's needed. MAPS Anabolic Advanced would not be the program. It would be MAPS Anabolic. Or MAPS Performance. Or MAPS Performance, or even MAPS 15 with the advanced version. All of those would be quite appropriate for you for about a 90-day period. Now, within that 90-day period, you, you won't notice a drop in anything. Um, you probably or likely, I would bet money, will see yourself get stronger and build a little muscle. Or option three is you, you just start to feel better then you ramp things up again and then boom, you start to see results again. But it's pretty clear, again, based off what you said, that we need to drop the volume down mm -hmm. and do kind of those basics uh, and, and stay there for a little bit. I love performance because one, I think it's going to be a novel stimulus for, it is going to reduce the volume a little bit and it's going to address the mobility, mobility concern. Yeah. Yeah. So it kind of hits everything that you you would want. I do think that a, even a little less volume like MAP15 would be uh, potentially ideal but I also want to be able to address the mobility concern that she has. And so I feel like that would be the, that would do it all. Yeah. yeah. It's two, two birds, one stone with that, because two, like you want to keep building muscle. Like you got to consider uh, these different planes of motion that also, if you're not expressing and moving in that direction, you're not going to be expressing the muscle the same way. And so too, there might be end range, you know, potential there. There might be other parts, uh, you know, uh, that um, you're going to be able to build and develop muscles in a way that you, you wouldn't otherwise if you're just strictly doing a lot of like sagittal plane movement. Yeah. And, and look, just to give you just some personal experience, Lord, now, get, now consider uh, the source, right? I don't typically miss days. I'm very, very consistent uh, to the point where it can be neurotic. Okay. So that's the context here. And I do tend to move towards more than is necessary for my body. The best strength and muscle gains I ever get is when I drop the volume. It's like clockwork with me. I'll reach a certain point where it becomes quite obvious that I might be doing too much. It's a recovery issue. And I'll bring things down. And then next thing I know, wow, my body. I mean, the last time I hit a PR in my deadlift was at 43 years old. And it was because I dropped the volume down. I went back down. I went down to MAPS 15 style yeah. training. Um, and all of a sudden I hit a PR that I, I broke a previous PR I did in my early thirties. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's, and that's, that's the context. So if that's you, if that sounds like you, uh, then the drop <laughs> down, the drop down is going to be what you need. And you'll know once you get into it, you'll start to feel like, wow, I feel good. I have well, you've already again. expressed how busy your work is right now. Right. And like all this added bit of, uh, excess stress that you're bringing in throughout the week. So, um, you know, that all, that all factors in. So if you, you know, if, if you realize that too, you, you kind of reduce your volume and you see progress with that, that was the answer all along. Yeah. So I think mass performance would be ideal for you, Lori. How does that sound? What we're saying? Does it, is it, is it resonating with you? Yeah. I was afraid that's what you were going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I just needed someone to tell me that, I guess. Um, I love going to the gym. It starts my day. I go in the mornings before work. I have to be at work at seven. And so I get up at four. I do go to bed early though. Um, so just starting my day. So it may be that I just go and do some mobility or walk exactly. or something like well, that. Well, that's what's still so what's go. great yeah. about that program is still go to the gym five days a week, yep. go to the gym five days a week. Three of those days will be foundational lifting days, which it's all program. And then the other two, we have mobility sessions written for you. So, and I'm totally for you getting on the treadmill or elliptical and doing that for 30 minutes of low intensity with some mobility. So you go spend an hour still. If you like, I, I like when I have clients that have a routine where they go to the gym already, and I don't like to disrupt that, right? You've, you've created those good habits. 
I think that's good. You keep doing that. We just switched what the focus is now. So instead of it always being a full hour of lifting weights, now you're doing something more where three of the days are like that. And then you're two of the days, your intensity. Yeah. Two of the days you do some, you know, mobility, stretching what, and maybe some elliptical or walking on the treadmill type of work. What was the fear? Why did you fear we would say this? Like what, what what's, <laughs> what's the worry? Um, I just thought you would tell me to cut back on my training because I knew that was probably what I needed to do. Yeah, but why Why the fear behind that? What's the worry or what is it that feels to you? And I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but it's important to identify what it is. Like, why is it that I don't want to cut the volume down? Like, what's the deal? It's, it's obviously has nothing to do with results because we're telling you you'll get better results with less volume, which will happen. So it's got to yeah, be. I believe you. I believe you. Yeah. So um, what, what is it? What is it for you? I think it was just, that's just, I'm consistent. I go every day. Yes. It's just my routine. But I think as long as I'm doing something, uh, whether it's it. walking or mobility, I think I'm good. You got it. Um, and I also put in my email, I asked about uh, possibly doing power lift at some time. Do you? think that would be okay like after i go through performance yes to yeah, yeah I, love, I love that that would be awesome i love that you would love that that'd be a great follow-up and, and it'll be really cool because it and hopefully it, the way this goes is that we reduce some of the volume by going to performance you see strength gains from that alone from doing that and you now addressing mobility you see the carryover and the benefits of that when you go into power lift so you'll hit prs and power lift yeah, if you follow this yeah way. I, I love that Okay. That sounds good. Yeah. I love seeing the strength gains and I definitely have that. I just, it's just the muscle. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Do you, uh, uh, do you have either one of those programs? Uh, 15 maps, uh, Perfect. sorry, mass Perfect. performance or maps power lift. I do not. Those are the two I don't have. Right. <laughs> we'll send you performance. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. You All got right. it. Thanks for calling in and, and tell your, your friends. Thank you so much for the support. Oh, I sure will. Thank you so, so yeah. much. Thank you. All right. All right. Bye. We got a we got a fan club of, of uh, <laughs> some Texas women. Of, yeah, women that like the podcast. That's awesome. Cool. That feels I mean, great. It's so it's so cool to. Uh, she doesn't sound like uh, a, a female that would gravitate towards a program like Powerlift. I think it's so cool that you're seeing this this trend. Like so that, awesome, right? Yeah. Like this mom, sweet, kind of soft spoken, like was into running most of her life, and is like interested and curious, like and getting strong. Yeah, I think yeah. it's such a once you Such feel a cool it, thing to see. Once a woman feels what it feels like and and uh, sees what it looks like from a healthy point of view, then they're like, it's like you pulled the wool you know, the wool off their eyes and like, oh my god, like yeah. this is amazing. This feels so much better. This is way different than what I was doing before. Now I can see why why people talk about it the way they do. It's this is amazing. And I I, I think that there there is you know the fear of like what having to and I'm and I'm all for like not breaking that routine right i think there's right. something to say about you can still go yeah you you, and you, you should do. i actually think you should sometimes yeah. what happens when someone i agree disrupts that then they lose that consistency right. now they're right. now they're even more inconsistent right. or whatever like that so i love the idea of still going there just you just shift your focus on other things that your body needs attention and i think she's going to see incredible benefits her next color is adolfo from arizona adolfo what's happening how can we help you how's it going guys good, good. what's good. up man Hey, so I appreciate the time. Um, I promise, even though that you guys are the Beatles of podcasts, um, I'm not <laughs> yes. going to faint. I will stay awake the whole time. I'm keeping that um, one, dude. I'm you're totally John one. Lennon. Yeah. <laughs> Adam's Ringo. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate it. And I'll jump right into my question. Uh, pretty recent to discovering Mind Pump, a little less than a year. Um, I've binged a lot of your shows. Um, life, life, lifelong struggler with weight at my heaviest, I was 362 currently fluctuate, uh, as of now about 206. I've been there around the last couple of weeks since I started anabolic. Um, but I can blow up pretty fast. Uh, I've been tracking my food for only about four weeks now, trying to hover around 1900 calories, but Delta of about 200 calories. So sometimes 2,100, uh, my other half who, uh, is kind of unfair. She has a great metabolism and she sabotages my diet quite frequently. <laughs> um, but uh, right now I'm, I'm around 26 to 27% body fat. My goal would be to be uh, sub 20s while maintaining or gaining strength. Um, currently my protein intake is around 190 to 195 grams, but I get a lot of that through shakes. Um, about 100 to 150 grams, depending on how my day goes. 
Um, 6'1", 39 years old. Like I said, I just picked up anabolic. I'm on week two, um, phase one. I ter- currently take creatine, ZMA, pre-workout, and a multivitamin. Uh, not all at once, obviously. Uh, my goals are somewhat selfish because I want to have more energy for my kids, five and six years old. My five-year-old, you might see her wandering around here. But I want to look good while doing it. want to be able to take off my shirt and not feel like I uh, still weigh 362 pounds. Um, but what can I really cut my calories to safely to kind of achieve those goals? And then more importantly, my biggest question is what are the negative effects of getting as much protein from shakes as I do? I've listened to so many of your podcasts and I hear you guys say I should get a lot of it from natural foods. Um, unfortunately, with how much I'm out of the house, I don't know or I can't really uh, pre, pre-pack a lot of my foods. I just get it through my protein shakes. Um, so what are, you know, what is the best way to, um, well, actually more importantly, what is the best way to keep my focus on that and not deter from the end results? Yeah, we no, need to, we need to bulk first. Yeah, like 1900 calories for your your size unless you just sit on the couch all day and don't move is really really low. Yeah. Okay. You know, yeah, I'll, I'll say this Rodolfo, uh, there's something here that seems a bit glaring uh to me. Y- you know, you asked about the protein shakes. Okay. Yes. So without getting into the whole like, you know, or is pr- pr- you know, shakes are processed and how much worse or better are they than regular food, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We could go down that path. It'll be a long discussion. There'll be a lot of like, are there studies? Well, not really, blah, blah, blah. But one thing's for sure. A protein shake is not going to produce the same satiety effects as whole foods. So 100 grams of protein from a protein shake uh, will provide a fraction of the appetite, controlling, satisfying effects that 100 grams of protein from whole foods will provide. And the reason why I'm telling you that is because you said you blow up quite easily. You've been heavy before. That that makes me believe that you can struggle with keeping your calories where they're at. And sometimes you go off and it makes a difficult type of deal. So I think one of the best things you can do is really make an effort to get your protein from whole natural foods. It'll feel completely different. It'll feel very different. 1,900 calories where half of the protein comes from shakes versus 1,900 calories where, where all of the protein comes from whole foods is going to feel like you're eating another 700 calories uh, on, in your diet. You're going to feel much more satiated. So that's the first place that I would start. Now, to what Adam's saying, look, you have two options. Either you cut your calories now and then get to the point where you lose some weight and then you try to reverse diet from there. Good luck. You're a big dude. You're already only at 1,900 to 2,100 calories. I think you said your delta was 200. Makes me think you're in finance, by the way. Do you work with money? Is that what you do? No, no, not at all. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, if it, okay. So you could try that approach, which is everybody does that. They say, oh, I'm going to lose the weight. And when I lose it, then I'm going to try and then I'm going to figure it out. That's a, that's a, I'm going to tell you right now, your fail rate with that is going to be over 90%. Or you could take the slower approach, which was what Adam said, which is a slow reverse diet from where you're at. Get your calories to a point that you feel comfortable cutting from. But I'm going to tell you right now, uh, uh, half your protein from shakes. The, I can't stress this enough when you're trying to get lean. The most important thing that you should pay attention to is your cravings, your appetite, your satiety. Nothing's going to nothing's gonna thwart your progress like having to battle with cravings and feeling hungry. There's nothing more challenging than that when you're trying to get lean. That's the, that's the biggest problem. So if you're getting your protein from shakes, you're basically shortchanging yourself there. You're basically doing... You know when I recommend people take a lot of shakes? When they when they have a tough time getting enough calories because they don't have a good okay. appetite. That's how I encourage them to get more because I know it's not I know a 50 gram shake's not gonna make them feel like full, like a 50 grams of you know chicken, beef, fish, or whatever. So my guess, my guess <clears throat> is he's using it right now to hit his protein intake and keep his calories low. It's like it, it, protein shakes are an easy way to get high protein and low calories. And so my guess, because I've trained a lot of clients yes. in your exact shoes, is you. First of all, let's talk about what you did that was incredible already. <clears throat> you went from three sixty two down. I mean, you've lost one hundred and fifty, one hundred sixty pounds. That's incredible. That's yeah. incredible. Awesome. That's yeah. uh, it's incredible that you still have it off. Very few people can do that. Now, the greatest challenge that my clients would have where you're at now is the mental hurdle of I need to actually bulk. I need to actually increase calories and I'm still not where I want to be physically, right? They normally, when you get to where you're at, you've made this huge stride and a huge accomplishment, but you're still not 
like feeling the way you look. You're like, I still want to be tighter, leaner looking, like I want more. And the truth is you've already gone down so low that if you want that next level to your physique, we're going to have to reverse out for a little bit, increase your calories, go on a bulk, try and add 10, 15 pounds of good lean mass to your body. That's the focus, whether you get all 10 or 15, but that's the focus. Totally possible. Is to build 10 to 15 pounds of muscle, really ramp that metabolism up to where you're able to eat 2,800 to 3,400 calories a day and not gain any weight on the scale. And then now come back down again to that 19, you know, 1,900 to 2,000 and watch how much leaner you faster you get and how much better you look because you've put on that lean mass. But it's really tough mentally because I know what you just came from and I know that that fear inside of, oh my God, if you start eating a little bit more and then all of a sudden you feel like you're holding a little bit of water and, you, and in your head, your head goes, oh my God, I'm getting fat. I'm putting fat on, I'm putting fat on. This is going to be the biggest challenge right here is to trust the process that I got you. You can easily eat 2,400 calories uh, a day, especially if you're getting it through whole foods. Now, and the easy way to do that and follow what Sal's saying is cut out the shakes. Go have some nice meats, man. Go get yourself a tri-tip. Go get yourself some some meat that's enjoyed. Get chicken thighs. Get some good ribeye steak. You're literally able to do, be able to do both of what we're saying. Yes. You're, you're, number one, you're going to be able to get the protein from whole natural sources. And because it's from food, it's going to come with a little additional calories. So you'll be able to reverse diet at the same time. You Yeah. If you literally replace the shakes with things like I just said, ribeye steaks, chicken thighs, and some good meals like that, it'll take care of both problems. That's right. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll switch over to whole natural foods and get more nutrient dense solid foods that will be satiety producing. In addition to that, we're going to bump your calories a few four or 500 more calories a day. And I guarantee you, you're going to, you're going to feel better. You're going to look better. Just the hard part is you got to be okay with you're eating more calories. You're probably going to take in a little more sodium, a little more carbohydrates. That's okay. Your body's going to hold a little bit of water. Trust the process. And watch, watch your, watch your strength in the gym, Adolfo. That's what's going what's going to happen if you do what we say. Yep. You're going to start to feel strong. You're going to get better pumps it's in the gym. Fuel it Focus sure. on that, not the scale. What program are we following right now? What do you got? Just like I said, I just started anabolic. Okay. I'm good. on uh, phase one, week two. The the best part for me is, like I said, I've only been tracking my my calories and weighing. So, like when I do eat whole foods, weighing it that past about four weeks. Okay. I uh, really like to be regimented, and uh, this is the first program I've ever followed. Okay, cool. Um, Perfect. Losing oh, yeah. the losing the weight took Potential forever, and then yeah. finally, when I was like, "All right, Mind Plum Nation," finally was just like everyone that I listen to or everyone that comes on your show. It's just like, "Hey, you guys got to pick up a program," and I was like, "All right, gotta I gotta finally do it." So I picked up anabolic. The best part is, is you know, now there's no excuse to not go do deadlifts. Right. I don't get to just sit there and go, "Oh, I'll do something else." It's like, <laughs> yeah. no, I'm gonna go do deadlifts and. What's great is just seeing the the just in the two weeks of, of actually being in phase one, uh, just overall a little bit better strength gains. Yeah, yeah. Even though I'm not at the calories that I would really want to be at, but uh, I guess sitting at around the 19 to 2100 calories, like, is it okay to just jump immediately to 2400 calories? Yeah, yeah. is yes. it okay? Yeah, you're gonna yeah. feel you're gonna your, yes. your strength gains are gonna go through the roof and you're gonna start yeah. putting muscle on. You're That's what a, we're telling yeah. you to do. You're in yes. a good place, yeah. bro. You really are. Yeah. You're in a you're in a good place right now. It's literally, I'm telling you, the hardest part will be the mental part. Is to yeah. is 100, to, yeah. Yeah, I and know. Pre that. Prep yeah. your prep your yeah. meals. I know protein powders are convenient. Do a little prep the night before or once a week. Cook a bunch of yeah. chicken thighs are my favorite because they're ground meat too. Yeah, yeah, throw it all. Yeah, in ground there. lean ground beef, chicken thighs. You know, those are all very they're inexpensive and they're easy, yeah. and they store really well in the fridge. And then you can make you can just eat them with vegetables or rice or potato, yeah. and you're all set. And you'll get you'll you're you're going to literally be able to do both of what we're saying simply by switching out that those shakes with uh, with real food. I like to um I I like to get you into the are, are you in our private forum yet or no. I'm not. I, yeah, I'd like to put you in there um, because I'd like to be there as you as you increase because I do know the 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 challenge. Yeah, and, the mental challenge. Right? So we you have somebody to voice your concerns or reach out to uh, as you go through this process, and we can continue to encourage you that you're doing the right things because you are in a good place. It is as simple as adding, getting rid of the shakes, replacing it with good things like yep. chicken thighs and ribeyes and things like that. And the hardest part is going to be not getting in your own head. So let me get you in the forum. That way I can keep you out of your own way. That'd be awesome. That's that's the biggest hurdle is 
I, as soon as I put on like a pound, I'm just yeah. like, all right, there's totally. I yeah. just it's like I'm just grabbing my sides. Yeah, like, there you. Yeah. That, so I get it, bro. I, hey, I, hey, I, I, I Adolfo, do this. Stop weighing yourself, and if you need to track anything in the morning without eating or anything, measure your circumference of your waist. That'll be a little bit better anyway. Because yeah. if you gain five pounds of water and muscle, your waist circumference probably won't change much at all. But the scale would go up, right? So stop weighing yourself because it's going to mess with your head for sure. Okay, I'll yeah. throw it away. I'll throw yeah, the scale yeah. away. And uh, I like that. Uh, at the EOS, that uh, I go to a big box gym over here in Arizona, and uh, they have an evil. What's nice about it is you can only use this measuring system once a month. So I'll kind of, I'll kind of oh, just cool. do that. Where yeah, oh, that's measuring, cool. instead of measuring myself yeah. every day, I'll do the once a month. That's oh, actually yeah. great. I would love that's, and I'd love that's to hear idea. from you like that once a month. Check in with us. Check in what it what it said and what you had been and fill us in on what you've been doing and then we'll just keep an eye on you and hey stay the course or maybe we'll make a few changes based off of what you you give us as far as feedback but you got this bro you got you got uh you got some good good stuff ahead of you right here if you can just uh, get past the the mental hurdles awesome well I appreciate it I look forward to being in the forum and uh, again thanks for all all you guys do I know you guys hear it all the time but uh, the stuff that you guys do. It, Pretty crazy how things come, you know, to fruition, kind of spiritual guy myself. So I'm always finding answers in places I don't expect. And you guys kind of fell on my lap. And uh, it's one of those things where it's like God opened my eyes to, hey, there's there's people out there that'll, that have your best interests at heart. They might not be close to you, you know, personally, but you guys have really opened up a lot of uh, avenues for me. And so I do appreciate what you guys do for not just myself, but everyone that listens. Well, thank you very thank much. You, man. God bless. A lot, man. Huge thank compliment. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. How cute was his daughter trying to do the hand <laughs> stuff behind his shoulders <laughs> yeah. and stuff? Yeah. <laughs> uh, little bunny ears. And, yeah, I know. It's so best. funny. I mean, I, you know, it, what's cool is that the answer was, you know, the both things that we wanted him to do, it was one thing that he had to do to, to be able to satisfy both. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just I knew take the shakes out, eat the food. It's a psychological challenge. You, yeah, yeah, totally. I knew when I when I saw the breakdown of the shakes and the grams yeah, and you're the like, calories, how are you get? I know, yeah, what he's doing is he's- Just eat, trying to eat just protein. Yeah, eating whey, eating whey shakes that are 100-something calories and 20, 30 yeah. grams of protein. I mean, there's another way you can do it, right? You can manage it. You yeah. can go skinless, boiled chicken breast. Yeah, that's, but I mean, that's <laughs> literally- <laughs> Like it, it's an easy, easy way to get high protein, stay low calorie, but that's not where he, what he needs right now. He yeah, needs totally. to bump his calories and what a better way to do it than cut the shake out and have yeah. a ribeye steak instead yeah, or some yeah. chicken thighs. So um looking forward to seeing his progress. Our next caller is Jason from Arizona. Jason, what's up, man? How can we help you? Hey guys. How's it going? Good. Um so my question is I'm a newly turned professional golfer and I have a deep passion and for strength training and then just building athleticism in the process of trying to be a pro athlete anyway. Um, right now I work out five days a week and do mobility pretty much every day and do cardio, um, usually three or four evenings a week. And I practice six to eight hours a day. And it kind of sounds like a lot, but, um, just kind of my process to becoming a pro golfer has been pretty wild. Uh, I had a pretty similar childhood to Sal. So just came from nothing, did masonry since I was 12 years old to pay for this um, and was lucky enough 12 years in to be able to turn pro. So I was just calling to see like, what do you guys uh, recommend I do to continue being able to grow and train as an athlete while also keeping my skills up? Oh, I love awesome. this. Do you, uh, uh, Justin, who's the name of our guy over in Arizona? That's the golf. You work Brandon, go Brandon. Um, yes. PF, not, oh, man. What was PFS. Is Brandon. it a, uh, yeah, PFS. PFS yeah. Brandon. Yeah. yeah, you follow those guys. Yeah, I do follow them. Yeah, okay, yeah. good. They're le they're legit. Yeah. Like he's got a lot of really good content around yeah. golfing and, J and Jason. I'm gonna tell you something though that I've 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 personally seen um, with athletes when they achieve a new level of competition, it's a very common mistake. So I'm just gonna uh, you know communicate this to you so you don't make that same mistake. So what they'll do is they'll train really hard. Mm -hmm to get into a new division or go from high school to college or college to pro or qualify for this marathon that I all of a sudden could qualify for. What they, what they do is they stop doing what they did that got them to improve and try to radically change their training yeah. because now they're in some new category. And that almost always backfires. It almost always backfires because what you were doing obviously got you to this point. Right. Now there's nothing wrong with fine tuning, but one of the, the, the uh, it'll be a huge mistake for you to be like, Oh my God, I'm a pro now. 
Now I got to do all kinds of different stuff yeah. because the odds are by throwing new things at yourself so radically that you're going to change your biomechanics, your movement, you're going to actually hamper your, uh, your, 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 uh, how well you perform. This is a very common mistake with, with athletes at this level, at your level is, is that now I need to make these massive athletic leaps, uh, in order to, you know, have that edge on my competition. And, um, physically I need to be stronger and I need to be, uh, bigger. Or I need to, um, you know, have more power in my swing and all these kinds of things when, you know, this is such a high skill sport and, uh, you're doing a lot of mobility and I think this is like an area that is overlooked a lot, but you know, it seems to be that you're, you're addressing that right away, but really it's, it's a lot of that. Um, it's such a high skill thing that that's that all the emphasis is on uh, aiding and benefiting the, the skill portion of it. So that way your, your body moves in a fluid manner and it, it provides, uh, the, the kind of like stability and grounding that it needs. So my, my recommendation is you are already checking all the boxes as far as the training mobility and everything you should be doing. My concern would be if you were my client is teaching you how to, uh, feel your body and know how sore you are or did you overreach and learning how to scale back there on the go. intensity of that's your training, true. right? Like mm -hmm. now we're now, now golf is starting to ramp up and that is our, that's our, obviously our priority, right? We're a pro, like you want to be the best golfer above all other things. So everything we do is to complement that and we don't want to get in our own way. So what I'm always would be checking in with you is like, hey, how'd you feel from yesterday's workout? Are you feeling good? Do you feel fluid? Do you feel connected? How was practice? You know, did it was it as good or better than last time? And like, and I'm I'm wanting to check in with you on on connecting the dots of when we train this intensely in the gym, what happens to our our golf swing and our practice and make sure that it's always complementing that and making us a better golfer and it's not impeding on it because I'm doing too much mm -hmm. in the gym. Like that would be our con yeah. conversation. Yeah, look at it this way, Jason. If I if I had a, a, a magic wand and I were able to double your strength right now over this call, boom, twice as much strength, your golf would be worse the second you were go you would go out to the field to play. With too much because now it's gonna change everything. It's gonna change your swing, the speed, biomechanics. Now all of a sudden you're a terrible golfer even though you just got twice as strong. Right. Here's the other thing to, to, to consider. And this is just, this can be very general what I'm saying, but it's, it's roughly true at, at early ages, the difference between the best athletes and, and everyone else is talent. You go up a level and it, then it becomes the difference between who has the met, who's got talent and who also works hard. Then when you get to the top of the level, do you know what break makes the difference? Mindset. Everybody works hard. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got a lot of talent. Now it's the people who can handle stress. It's the people who can perform under pressure. It's the people whose heart rate doesn't go up and they get nervous and sweaty when they're in, you know, under the spotlight and uh oh, they're behind and what do I do? And you consistently see this with studies across the board. You see this with high level uh, military uh, individuals as well. Like everybody that gets into SEAL school, for example, has got the physical fitness to be able to complete it. The people that make it are the ones with the mental toughness. So my point with that is, don't, I wouldn't change anything radically about your training. I think Adam said it was beautiful. I would look at yep. recovery, mobility, kind of honing things in, listening to my body. And then you really want to know what's going to make a difference is mindset training. Yeah. And to that point, Dr. Brett McCabe is a great yes. resource for that. And we've had him on the show before and I haven't <laughs> thought about, but he's, he, he deals with a lot of pro golfers, but it's very mindset driven. And I, I fully agree. Like that's kind of like where where you're at now in your, in your career of like getting to this point is like, now how can I really sharpen and fine tune, you know, so it's consistent. Like it's the consistency of performing, you know, against all the variables that are yes. going to come at you. Can like, you consistently have the mindset uh, that makes you as good as you could possibly be? How do you hone that in? How do you train and develop that? That's now where the focus should be because whatever you did with your training and practice to get you here is is, is working. Uh, that doesn't mean he can't get any better, but definitely don't radically change everything. I hope I'm hammering that yeah. home. Had, had, had you heard of Brett before? Do you know who Brett is? Who we're talking about? Yeah, I've heard of that. Uh, I watched part of that episode. Oh, okay. I believe bro, he was it, on here. That makes a huge mindset. Is where at your level, at the pro level, that's the difference right there. That's the big difference. Yeah. And yeah. Congrats sure. on making it this far, man. That's that's, that's yeah, awesome, dude. Huge accomplishment. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For sure. Congratulations. And then uh 
Do you have any of our, you have our RGB bundle. You're following that. Do you have Maps Prime Pro? Because I think the correctional exercise stuff in there would be yeah, more beneficial Prime Pro to have or your back pocket. Symmetry with the isometrics yeah. and unilateral work. Do you have it? You have, yeah, do you have those? Good to go through. I don't have either of those. I just have the RGB bundle at the moment. Okay. I like, you know, here's it. Symmetry is great. Prime Pro, I think, though, you, if you have that, You'll always be able to go to that whenever you have Nagy an issue. Shoulders. Yeah, you'll always be able to pull from it. So let me send that to you for free. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. You got it, Appreciate man. It. Hey, keep, hey, keep us up to date on the, the journey, man. We'd love to hear how it goes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'll let you guys know for sure. All right, Jason. It. Awesome. Talk to you guys later. You guys, ever, do, you, do you guys have any experiences, personal experiences, where you realized like, oh, God, this is all this mindset part is everything right now. This is the why I'm performing good or bad or yeah. Like I, I, when I competed in one of my first big tor tournaments in jujitsu, I remember in practice, like I would never gas, like you could throw, like I could go round Robin 10 guys in a row. I felt like a machine fluid moving, whatever got to the trial. was so amped up mentally get to this tournament. I'm so amped up in one match. I was so gassed. I felt like I had no fitness whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what is wrong with me? Am I sick? Like what's going on? I was nerd. My mindset, my mindset was totally off. It threw me off completely. My performance sucked, uh, as a result of that. Yeah. And well, it, going into college, it was, my mindset was very much more on like, I'm undersized and I'm not powerful enough. I'm not strong enough. I'm not fast enough. And so I put so much effort in that direction uh, that even when I was finally the, you know, a good size, I was, uh, you know, pretty quick and I could move quick. I didn't have that killer edge I used to have. And, mm. and that was all like mindset driven. Once I s finally kind of came back and revisited that my, my last year, it was like a completely different, uh, performance I would, I would have. Well, I remember when they, I shared this study a long time ago on the, on the podcast of all these super high performing athletes, like the Steph Curry's and stuff and, yeah. the, and downhill skiers, like the yeah, most fighter elite, pilots. Yeah. And the most elite of elite. One of the things they all had in common was, was extremely low heart rates in extremely scary situations. Yeah, like the yes. more stress pops up, the yeah. almost calmer they get. Yeah, and that's not because they did a lot of cardio and so their heart rate <laughs> yeah. was low. That's because of their mindset. Yeah. Because they trained they, it. Yeah, they trained so well for those those moments that they were actually, oh, I've been here before. Mm -hmm. I know what to do. I got this. You know what I'm saying? And that made such an impact on their level. Like, yeah, this guy's doing. Jason's doing plenty already yeah, as far as everything history. he lists. That's why I was like, I don't really know where to go. And again, like I've seen the right things. I've seen so many people do this. Like, okay, now I'm paying college. So now I'm going to double my volume. I'm going to radically change my workout. So, and then they hurt yeah. themselves or overdo it. It's like, yeah. no, no, no. What you were doing worked. Keep doing that. Our next caller is Brendan from Missouri. Brendan, what's happening? What's up, Brendan? How do I help you? Not much. How about you guys? Thanks for having me. Hey. hey. Yeah, you got it, man. How can we help so you? So I'm a big, big listener, huge fan. My main, my only question revolves around butt wink. Are you guys familiar with the term while squatting? Yeah, Adam winks at my he's, butt he's all the time. He's a big butt winker. He's always, so like, stop looking. Yeah. No, we know what that is. Yeah, a little bit of a pelvic tilt uh, at the bottom of the squat. Yep. So my question is, how do you avoid that? And also, is it as bad as it comes off to be? Because I think in my gym especially, you walk in there and probably 50% of people back squatting have it. Okay. Does it first of all? Does it bother your low back? Do you? Does it? Do you? Does it like start burning while you're doing sets? Does it hurt you later on the next day? Is it? Is it uncomfortable? So I actually emailed you guys Saturday right after my workout, and it happened in my last set of anabolic phase one, and it hurt pretty bad. So bad, I locked up something. I actually went to the doctor yesterday. Oh wow! Mm. He said my joints just inflamed. Get, put me on some steroids and muscle relaxers. I should be able to lift in a week. But so usually no, but every once in a while, yeah. So that's what made me reach out because okay. actually was bothering me quite a bit. That's what determines whether or not it's an issue for that's the most right. part. That's uh, right. Now, where, where does it, what joint was inflamed? Is it your SI joint? Where's the pain? Is it on one side? The SI joint and a little more on the right side. Okay. All right. So, okay. So there could be a few different couple. Here's the most common reasons why somebody's uh, pelvis will tilt excessively at the bottom. I say excessively. Because the movement in the low back a little bit is probably not a bad thing. It's natural. Yeah, it's probably not a bad thing. Depends on the individual. Where it becomes an issue is when you start to hit ranges of motion that are close to the end of the range of motion. So now what happens is the your spine's ability to flex or extend uh, is supporting you. In other words, it's 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 extending or flexing, and it's in, in, in it's it's 
deepest range of motion with that. Then you add load to it, and now what's holding yeah, you is your spine joint. joint. That's when it becomes a problem. But if muscle's supporting you, it's typically not an issue. The two areas that tend to be an issue are stability in the hips, uh, so mobility, stability in the hips, and or, and this is usually the one, is ankle mm -hmm. mobility. So if have you tried wearing squat shoes or elevating your heels to see if it still happens? I wear those nobles, the pre flat, so no, not squat shoes. So here's how you might know. Yeah. Uh, You're going to want to test this out. Wear some squat shoes or stand on some like 10 pound plates under your heels. Squat like you normally do. See if the butt wink goes away. If it goes away or gets a lot better, you got to work on ankle mobility. Yeah. Okay. If that doesn't change, then, there, then there's probably some hip mobility issues and maybe some core stability type issues that I would want to focus on. Um, and we have some great, we have a great program called Mass Prime Pro that'll address all yeah, of those Yeah, send things. him Prime Pro because I actually think that even if yeah, these are- and ankles. Yes, I, yeah. I think that I've, I've yet to meet a client where me teaching them 90-90s and combat stretch for your ankles yeah. has not benefited yeah. them. Yeah. Everybody- It's never been a detriment. Exactly. I don't know anybody who I've trained. I mean, I have pe people like you who uh, this has solved that issue. And then I've had other people where that's just, oh man, I feel better in my squat now. I feel so much more comfortable. Mm -hmm. I feel more stable at the bottom. Like, oh, I'm so glad I do that. So like, you're going to benefit from that. It's like, it could be life-changing or game-changing for you though. Like it was for me, like getting- Getting good at my 90-90s, working on my combat stretch, getting comfortable in a deep ass to grass squat completely eliminated my low back pain. So this, I know the guys were teasing about uh, me at the beginning, but that's because this was something I suffered from. So I had yeah. excessive butt wink. Uh, in fact, I was so bad that any time that I did high rep squats, if I did over eight squats, I, after that set, I'd be laying on the ground because my low back was just in, on fire. And I'd be like doing back presses and like having to take a break because my low back was just, and that's because I just had so much of an excessive wink back and forth. And so once I worked on my hip mobility and my ankle mobility, it completely eliminated that. I was able to get all the way down, stay, stay in control of my pelvis and then come out no problem and not have any problems. So that's step one, really. It's like regaining that kind of stability in both ankles and hips. And so to do that is to, you know, spend an excessive amount of time on these mobility drills and, and also to prime before you do your workouts with that. But to spend that extra bit of time, once you go back to squats, with making sure you're bracing, your tempo is very, very slow. If, if anything, you're going to be like pausing at the bottom and, and making sure that you're connected still. You're still like being able to, to have that kind of muscle contraction and tension that you have supporting uh, your hips and your, and your lower back. Uh, so to do that too, like the Dumphy squat is another good uh, sort of drill to run. So it, it helps you kind of focus on that that specific fact alone. You need that kind of bracing. You need that kind of tension uh, in order to support your spine yeah. so you don't have problems. Now, just keep in mind, Brendan, it, there's there's a lot of moving parts in a barbell squat, uh, but you're looking at the knee, the ankle, the hips, and of course the low back because it's attached to the hips right there. And if one of those joints isn't doing what it's supposed to, then the other joints are going to move more or compensate for that in order to allow you to perform the movement. So that's why we're telling you to look at those two things. Because you might be thinking, what does that have to do with my ankles? Why? What do you mean my hips? They feel totally fine. Well, if your ankles aren't able to allow for the range of motion under control that's that would produce a good squat, well, the next thing that's going to take over or have to do that is maybe your hips or your low back. So that's why we're telling you to, to work on those things. Now, can you do, do you go all the way down in your squat? Yeah, I try to break 90. Okay. For the time being, while working on those things, squat down until about you feel 90. like you're about to do the butt wink yeah. and then don't go any lower. So that's your limiting, that's your range of motion. Don't go beyond where you're going to get the butt wink. Work on that mobility. And then as your mobility improves, start to lower the squat. But I would stop squatting to the point where you get a butt wink. So stop, stop just short of that. So if it's just a 90 degree, 90 degree squat, so be it. So do that instead of do it on. So what if I do it on the 10 pound plates and then I don't wink? Do it on 10 pound plates or without? I would prefer. Well, okay. So oh, that's like a bit it. of a crutch. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would prefer you work on your ankle mobility and and then be able to do it with your feet not being elevated. Now, if you're just in a hurry and you're like, I'm going to squat heavy and I don't care, 
you can do that. It's also a good, the, why Sal's giving you that too is actually just so you get that confirmation. It's just yeah. a test. Like that's like, so the, if you go put your heels elevated and like you, it, it feels like one of the most comfortable squats you've done. There's your problem. You, you know, that's your, it. Your like there, there you are. Like you just doing that. And or if like, let's say you do some, you prime with some 90 nineties and elevate the heels and you feel like you've had the best squat you've ever had. Like, there you go. Like it's, you need to work on hip stability and mobility and address the ankle yeah. mobility and just put the work in to do that. And it's going to get rid of Brendan, all. you ever go to a restaurant and you sit at one of those, you sit at a round table and it like wobbles, you know? Yeah. And so the waiter comes over, oh, I'll fix that. And he, he folds up a napkin and sticks it under one of the feet. Okay. That's squat yeah. shoes. So, I mean, you could do that, but you could also get a table that's balanced. Uh, and that's probably a better answer. And fix the base. That's right. Awesome. That was very helpful. Thanks, guys. I want to give one shout out to a huge listener, Mark Gorman. But once again, thank you guys. You're the best. All you right. got it, man. Take it easy, bro. Have a good one. It looks like he sells insurance. Did he say Mark Norman? That's Gorman. what I said too. That's a awesome comedian. He said Gorman. Oh, Gorman. Oh, he said, G. Oh. Yeah. I'm less excited. It's, it's his boy. <laughs> Sorry. Shout out to Mark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I got I get I mean, I, I easily get caught up in using the crutches because I get impatient. So I'm like, okay, I can work on my ankle mobility. Or I could squat four plates. Let's do that instead. You know? <laughs> yeah. so I get it. You know what I mean? I, mean? That's, I, yeah, that's, I get the whole deal. That's you why know? that happens, right? Yeah, because yeah, so. you want to keep progressing with the ego lifts. I yes. mean, it was it hands down one of the, if not the uh best and most important things I think I ever did in my in in my training career was we, to, you did it while being a podcast on the show yeah, we got to see yeah. that transformation mm -hmm. right and here, and and to this day i ha i have yet to ever have low back pain ever again isn't that wild yeah your whole it, life yes and then gone my whole so. life i always just and you know it's so, so funny because it runs the family my sister my uncle my cousin like we all have like low back and we all have that kind of shift like that mm -hmm. And we you all, also stop wearing heels. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, the high heels definitely. <laughs> That'll do. Look, if, like, I kind of miss those. If you're a trainer and a coach, and you want to become a successful trainer coach, where your clients get results, they keep results, and you make more money because now you've built an incredible business. Here's what you do: go to mindpumptrainer.com, sign up. There's a three day training course I will be hosting starting January 15th, For and free. it's free. It's free. Go sign up. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is at mindpumpjustin on Instagram. I'm at Mind Pump to Stefano and Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. 